you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of the Environment and reads, how will changes made last year to the Resource Management Act help the efficient processing of consents for major transport and electricity infrastructure? The Hon. Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, the national consenting option provided in the first phase of the Government's resource management reforms is attracting high levels of interest. The process has the advantage of a single robust process overseen by the new Environmental Protection Authority with a board chaired by an Environment Court judge and up to four specialist members with skills relevant to the application. The one-step process requires a decision with nine months with limited appeal rights. Chris Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what significant applications have been lodged with the new EPA and is the Minister aware of other projects being considered for the streamlined process? Dr. Speaker. Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, the EPA has received two major applications, the $1 billion uh, contact to Hara 2 geothermal station near Taupo in February and Auckland's $2 billion water view connection on State Highway 20 last Friday. The EPA has also been in dialogue on six other major infrastructure projects that are likely to be lodged over the next year, including Transmission Gully in Wellington and the Southern Motorway in Christchurch. The expected total investment being considered under the streamlined process during this term of Parliament will involve infrastructure worth over $6 billion. It's an important part of the government's economic and job strategy that these are processed efficiently. Chris Hockenvall. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, has the Minister seen reports of the drawn-out resource consenting processing that took 15 years in the case of the Wellington City Bypass, 12 years in the case of the Wangamata Marina, 10 years in the case of the Northern Gateway Motorway, and six years in the case of the Wairaki geothermal expansion. And what reports has he seen on actions taken during the last decade to address these obvious problems? The Honourable Dr. Mr. Speaker, uh, yes, I have. And both the environment and economy was the loser from those delays. For instance, the six-year delay from 2001 to 2007 in consenting the Wairaki power station contributed to the record high burning of coal at Huntley to generate the necessary electricity. Equally so, the delays with the Wellington inner city bypass and the Northern Gateway project resulted in years of additional congestion with extra unnecessary emissions and the loss of economic efficiency. No attempt was made to fix these delays during the previous nine years. Question number nine, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, point of order, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, look, my apologies for coming uh, back to this issue so late, but it took a few moments to get the data. Um, I seek leave uh, to table the OECD chart listing where New Zealand now ranks in terms of GST. Of the 29 countries in the OECD, uh, that are reported on for GST. New Zealand is 21st. In other words, there are 28 order. countries above us. The House the has got enough information, though. Order. Order. No order, I say to the Right Honourable Prime Minister, when seeking leave to table a document, the entire document is not read out. Well, leave has been sought to table the, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, I'm seeking clarification as to the nature of the document. Does this show GST as a percentage of GDP? Order, I invite the Right Honourable Prime Minister no, to... No, it's the rate. Order, order. M Mr Speaker. Order, I apologise to the Right Honourable Prime Minister. I gave the Leader of the Opposition, the, extended him the courtesy of, under a point of order, seeking clarification as to the document. That outburst from Labour front benches was unacceptable. Now, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, there are measures the Speaker has available to sort this place out if he needs to. And I won't, uh, I won't be... Uh, backward and using them if I have to. The House has just been unacceptably disorderly today. Now, the Prime Minister has sought leave to table that document. I have. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, if I could just speak well, to that I want to put that... I seek leave for that, yeah. uh, Leave has sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. Right Honourable Prime Minister... Mr Speaker, order. earlier in my questions today, I raised an issue with the Leader of the Opposition who is coming to the House uh, without substantiated quotes 
The, uh, the quote that I gave, I've now gone and checked, the quote that I gave is in relation order. to... No, no, order. No, no, order. Order. No, order. Uh, the, even the Prime Minister can't litigate an issue by way of point of order. Uh, what I sense the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Prime Minister, is seeking to do is to uh, try and, uh, by way of point of order, debate an issue with the Leader of the Opposition. He cannot do that. Uh, neither, no one in this House can do that. Uh, that's not a matter of order. That's a matter of uh, what took place during an exchange during question time. And, uh, and point of order is not a way, unless the, the, the Right Honourable Prime Minister has two options. He can make a ministerial statement, which is debatable, or if it's a matter of person that it's reflected on person, he can seek leave to make a personal explanation. But you cannot, a mem no member can litigate an issue by way of point of order. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. So I'm not challenging your ruling, sir. What I am saying, and I think it's a point that you could go and reflect on, is that the Leader of the Opposition has got in the habit of coming to the House with theoretical quotes. He does not have them in writing and cannot no, produce order, them. No, order, order, no, order, order. The Right Honourable Prime Minister must presume his... Was that a Napui war cry or... Uh, uh, but... Uh, now, the, the Right Honourable Prime Minister must accept the standing orders of the House. Any quote that is in, contained in, the, in a question of a member has been validated with the clerk's office. And uh, while I do accept that sometimes the quotes may be a, uh, a short part of a longer passage, but in, in where, the, where the quote is contained in a question, as I've heard the Right Honourable Prime Minister do, the, the Minister in answering the question can point out the rest of the quote and point out where they therefore disagree with the way the quote has been interpreted. But we cannot litigate in this House unless uh, what, what uh, I would accept is if the Right Honourable Prime Minister is saying that, uh, and the Speaker is ultimately responsible for this, that the Speaker failed to properly validate a question, then I'm, I'm prepared to look at a particular question to, to and I apologise in advance if I have failed to properly have a question validated. But points of order beyond that, I'm very happy to look at a question if the Prime Minister wishes me to look at a particular question. But debate, debating across the House whether or not a member has used a quote correctly, because that is the responsibility of my office to make sure that the quotes, any quote contained in a question is correct. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the question isn't about a primary question. If that was a primary question, that would be absolutely fine. But what the member is doing is in supplementary questions providing quotes which are inaccurate. And you, sir, then make me answer those questions, and rightfully so. But if the member is not providing proper quotes, I cannot be expected to answer things that are actually inaccurate. Well, I'll hear the Honourable Darren Hughes briefly, but I do not want to hear too much argument sure. about... Look, there, there are two points. Firstly, the, the Prime Minister makes a personal reflection on another member oh. of the House. But by, by, by saying, as he's done by way of point of order... Order. That a member... No, order, order. Uh, Order. That's not going to help. Our members will not interject. Uh, but that's not going to help the order of the House. I think the Prime Minister has raised something that he feels quite concerned about. Uh, and, and I do accept that it is an issue of order because uh, if quotes are used in supplementary questions uh, they can, and, and, and ministers feel they're being used improperly, that, I guess, can lead to disorder. But having said that, I must say, the minister, when a question is asked and contains a quote, the minister does get the final word in, in answering the question and has the chance to point out that the quote is, is inaccurate. And that is a perfectly good answer to a question that contains a quote to, to point out that the quote is, is, is selective or is not reflecting the, the, the point being made when the, the statement was made by the minister is a perfectly fair answer to such a question. Now, I don't think I've been unduly hard on government ministers today answering questions. If anything, I've been quite hard on opposition members uh, over the quality of questions asked where they've sought my assistance and I've not insisted on any particular answers. And I feel that today no one could argue that I've been unduly harsh on ministers expecting any particular answer. If anything, I've been the other way. Now, if the Honourable Darren Hughes has a further point, I'll... The second point of order, sir, and it's around the, uh, the point the Prime Minister raises with supplementary uh, questions, because, as you know, the, the point the Prime Minister makes is often a point the opposition feels where information given by way, of uh, by way of answer to a supplementary question we don't see as fulsome or, or, or as consistent with previous answers or accurate with respect to the primary question. And we've written to you and taken uh, letters uh, where, we've, where we've alleged to breach a privilege on those matters uh, that have taken place in 
supplementary uh, question. Sorry, the answers to supplementary questions. So it's completely open to the Prime Minister if he believes the words that have been quoted 